Hi, I'm Kayla Fusilier. I'm a graduate assistant in Dr. Maninder Singh's Cropping Systems Agronomy Lab at Michigan State University. Today I want to talk to you about corn growth reproductive stages. It is important to be able to correctly identify reproductive stages in your field to determine best management strategies. Many people think that tasseling is the first of the reproductive stages. While it is important for reproduction, it is actually the final vegetative stage. The first reproductive stage is R1 or silking. During the R1 growth stage, silking and pollination occur. For pollination to occur, pollen must travel from the tassel to the silks. There is one silk per ovary on a corn ear. The silks will elongate 1.5 inches per day after they emerge from the husks. After they emerge from the husks, silks are receptive for 10 days but may deteriorate quickly after 5 days. Pollen can be captured anywhere along the silk. It then germinates, develops a pollen tube, penetrates the silk, and elongates to the ovule within 24 hours. This results in fertilization or the joining of the two reproductive cells. During the R1 growth stage, insect feeding on the silks is of concern. Insect feeding can clip the silks back, resulting in no fertilization of the ovules. During silking stage, most of the silks do get pollinated due to high pollen levels in each field. Though environmental factors such as stress can reduce pollination. Though the reproductive stages have started, plants at the R1 growth stage still need 1,100 to 1,200 more growing degree days to reach physiological maturity from R1. Growing degree days are a measure of heat accumulation and the amount of growing degree days accumulated each day can vary depending on the weather conditions. The next growth stage is R2 or blister. During this stage, kernels appear as white blisters on the cob and contain a clear fluid. Growth of kernels begins directly following fertilization and consists of a rapid increase in water content with kernels containing 85% moisture at the beginning of R2. Silks detach from their respective kernels following fertilization and silks outside the husk begin to dry and turn brown rapidly. Some starch is beginning to accumulate in kernels during this growth stage. Plants will need another 875 to 975 growing degree days to reach maturity from this stage. The next growth stage is R3, also known as milk. During this growth stage, kernels are yellow on the outside and contain a milky white fluid on the inside. Kernels will explode easily when pressure is applied to them. Kernel moisture at the beginning of this stage is 80%. Starch continues to accumulate in the endosperm, causing an increase in dry matter. Endosperm cell division is also nearly complete during this stage, and continued kernel growth is due to cell expansion and starch accumulation. The next growth stage is R4 or dough. This stage consists of kernels with a doughy consistency on the inside. The milky fluid from the R3 milk stage turns to a dough consistency in R4 due to starch accumulation. Kernels now have a matte yellow appearance. Kernel moisture is approximately 70% while whole plant moisture ranges between 75 and 80%. At this stage, a killing frost will result in a 55% yield loss while a light frost will result in a 35% yield loss. The next growth stage is R5 or dent. At this growth stage, all or nearly all of the kernels are dented at the top due to declining moisture content and an increase in starch content. The kernel moisture at the beginning of R5 is 60%. During the R5 growth stage, a distinct horizontal line appears near the dented end of the kernel, also known as the milk line. This is the boundary between the liquid, milky part of the kernel and the solid, starchy part of the kernel. This line moves from top to bottom of the kernel as the corn matures. Kernels within R5 are designated as quarter milk line, half milk line, or three quarter milk line. At a quarter milk line, dr total dry matter accumulation is 65%, while whole plant moisture is at 52%. Once the plant progresses to half milk line, dry matter accumulation is all the way at 90% of total accumulation. 
At this half milk line stage, kernel moisture is between 35 and 40 percent, while whole plant moisture is between 65 and 70 percent. By the time the plant has reached early dent stage, it only needs 425 to 525 more growing degree days to reach physiological maturity. At the later R5 stages, at half milk line or three quarter milk line, the plant only needs 200 to 300 more growing degree days to reach R6. During the R5 growth stage, a frost can cause great damage to the plant still. At beginning dent, a killing frost will result in a 40% yield loss, while a light frost will result in a 25% yield loss. As that plant continues to mature, a frost will do less damage. At half milk line or R5.5, a killing frost results in a 12% yield loss, while a light frost results in a 5% yield loss. The final stage of corn reproduction is R6 or physiological maturity. This stage occurs after the milk line has reached the tip of the kernel and before the black layer forms. At this stage, corn plants have accumulated their total dry matter. Kernel moisture is in between 30 to 35 percent. Leaves and stalk tissue at the beginning of this stage are green to brown colored and begin to dry down and become more brown as the stage progresses. Following physiological maturity, an abscission layer known as black layer forms. Physiological maturity and black layer are terms that are often used interchangeably even though they do not mean the same thing. Oftentimes, producers and growers will look for the black layer as a sign of physiological maturity because it is hard to visually identify exactly when those plants reach physiological maturity. The last stage in the corn growth life cycle is dry down. This stage follows physiological maturity and during this stage the corn kernels lose between a half a percent and three quarters of a percent of moisture per day under ideal environmental conditions. This continues until the kernels reach 20% moisture, which is around ideal harvestability. Knowing how to identify corn growth stages during reproduction is important because environmental stressors during each stage can affect the plant differently. For more information on this and other projects within our lab, please visit us at agronomy.msu.edu. Thanks!